I'm a sexy army person. <laughs> I'm here to work out. Your whole ability to remind people that you exist kind of just fades away. I'm out there knocking on doors like, hey, have you heard of Cutco? <laughs> and people are like, cut what? <laughs> I'm like, it's a great set of knives. I do that all the time. I'll be like on a train and then it just derails. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What the heck was I talking about? Nah. The quickest way for me to vote against your candidate is for you to knock on my door. You hey, wasted a year of my life. Chance. I wasn't suspicious until you said that. Yep. Now I'm thinking maybe you are. I censor the words and, and that's it. Yeah. In all of our videos. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm joined with my buddy Joe today, Joe Mazza. How's it going? Um, old army buddy of mine. Nona is in the office today and recording some content that we've been talking about recording for a while. So Joe, thanks for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm happy that you uh, thought of me and wanted me here. So, yeah, it's cool. My, uh, my, my guest co-host, I guess you could call it. So the, the thing I've been trying to round up guests, um, both like from friend circles, but also, you know, other people, remote guests and stuff like that. The majority of our guests so far have all been guys and oh, <laughs> yeah. And, um, all like people that I know, there's a, a handful of uh, famous people like Emory King has been on and stuff like that, but we haven't talked about like any women specific stuff yet. So Nona has <laughs> been like the third wheel in all, almost all the guest episodes. Okay. So now I'm trying to like line them up. So for those of you that are like, Andrew's always got people that he wants to talk to, but no, 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 we're working on it. Okay. We're working we'll, on it. We'll get there. We'll yeah. get there. I don't know why we, I said we, I'm not, it's him. <laughs> he'll, he'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she uh, now she's back on social media, so now she can. It's easier to engage with people. That's one of the things yeah. that sucks when you take a break from social media is that basically your whole ability to remind people that you exist kind of just fades away. It does, yeah. Because I mean, it's just such a huge part. There's like what 150 million people or something on Facebook in the United States alone. Oh, probably. Yeah, it's well, so crazy. So it's I'm, probably two or three times that much with all the people that have fake profiles. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> got, got, got to reach out to people in multiple ways with the same profile. Do you have any fake profiles? I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I mean. I was looking over at Crystal to see if she was going <laughs> to. <laughs> no fake profiles. Yeah. Joe's, Joe's wife is here over <laughs> off camera. She did, She wasn't even sure if she wanted to be in here while we were recording. I'm like, what she, are we? She was like. Do you do you not want to? Do you want me to go sit in the car or something so that way I'm like I'm like yeah just don't let me see your face because if I see like the I'm be like are you recording us right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so uh, you've got a bunch of stuff going on. You you I do bounced around a little bit since since you got out of the army. Yeah, had some yeah. stuff happen and came yeah. back to North Carolina and yeah. now you started a real estate agency. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of been a little bit of doing everything. So like when I got out of the army, I. I sold knives for Cutco. So I've been in sales for 10 years now. Um, and I started with that and then I moved over to selling cars and then I got my license, but then didn't use it. And then ended up with DR Horton in 2020 and then just recently left them um, in 20, what year is this? 2024. Yeah. <laughs> um, and decided to open up my own firm and uh, it's, it's going well. I can't complain. It's nice. Um, my dad wants some help in his agency out in Hawaii. So I'm going to fly out there and help him get it set up with that. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So for Cutco, were you one of the people like at Sam's or Costco, like bugging people as they were walking around or did you, how did you do it? No, worse. So I did it in South Carolina and I didn't know anybody. Their big thing is like that you, uh, they want you to use your sphere of influence heavily. So it's like all the people, you know, in the area that you live in, they're really targeting people that have been in an area for a long time. That's like their, their pitch. Um, but I didn't have that when I was there. Like I had just moved there, didn't know a single soul. So like I'm out there knocking on doors like, hey, have you heard of Cutco? <laughs> and people were like, cut what? <laughs> I'm like, it's a great set of knives, da 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 And like big joke was like, it'll make you look sharp. Uh, knives. <laughs> I, I always, I, I don't know why, but anytime I go to any store place or whatever where they have those like third party booths or sellers, mm -hmm. they always latch on and want to talk to me for some reason. I walked into Costco this past week. Yeah, like Thursday, for, I don't remember what day it was, doesn't matter. I walk in there and the uh, AT&T guy, so there's, you know, I'm with a big wave of people mm -hmm. 
and he like looks right at me and he starts to say something. I said, I'm not here to talk to you, bitch. <laughs> and he was like, he's like, damn, yeah. <laughs> what a dude. <laughs> it's probably like, you're probably the tallest guy in your group of people that you walk with. Right, yeah. There was all mostly elderly people, people that are hunched over their car, things yeah. like that. You'd probably just look easy to talk to like that guy. Like, but, okay. So I, I was, most people in this area already probably have at t for internet. There's not very many other good. Spectrum sucks. Yeah, Spectrum's their, good. Their cable internet is trash. I don't think, I don't know if Verizon even offers their, what is it, Fios or whatever. I haven't seen it out here. Yeah, there's like, I don't even know if that third, uh, that independent place over in Leland, I don't even know if they. ATMC? Yeah, or not, it's not Focus. ATMC. Focus yeah. now. I don't even know if they run anything over here. So you don't have very many options unless you buy satellite internet, which unless you have Starlink, people don't really do that anymore. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and that's, you don't need to. that's overpriced. That's a great for like people that are traveling or for emergencies, or if you're running a business that always needs a backup link yeah. that can never go down, assuming you have battery backup or generator or something. Mm. But when anybody that walks into Costco probably already has, I would say at least 50, 60, maybe even 70% of the people that are walking in there already have your service. Yeah. So now you're annoying people who already have you, yeah. that they have to have this. They don't even want to talk to you to begin with. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's like, that's sales in general. Like nobody wants to talk to a salesperson. It's always yeah. like, ah, oh, I made, do I, I made have the, to listen to your pitch? <laughs> I made the comment the other day. So I got my, have you seen the new driver's license? No, I haven't seen the new driver's I'll, license. I'll have to show it to you later. It's it's completely different from the old North Carolina. So I had to get the uh, real ID. I hadn't gotten it mm -hmm. yet. And I went and I had to update my registration. I did, you know, all in one foul swoop, which is crazy for North Carolina because they're not even in the same building. Yeah. Um, but I go, lost some train of thought on that. New ID, had to go into a building. They're two separate buildings. Um, <laughs> why, what am I even talking about now? I don't know. I do that all the time. I'll be like on a train and then it just derails. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What the heck was I talking about? Nah, it'll come back to me later. And then like 10 hours later, I'll be like, I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this is really going to bother me because I had, I know I had something that I wanted to say. But, anyways, I have the new ID. It's pretty cool looking. It's yeah. got like a lizard on it. You're, okay. So, your, uh, your name is like the, the tail. So, you have, okay. if you're not looking right at it, now I got to look at my ID. It's the 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 actual picture, your your headshot or whatever. Yeah, it's not that one. I not this one. This is the old one. There's like transparent parts on it. There's oh, yeah. like a, there's like a hologram. The light. Yeah, yeah, you can see that right there. I don't know if anybody can see that there, but <laughs> well, they could probably take a snapshot of your barcode on the back. <laughs> oh, okay. um, I'm not worth much. Take it. <laughs> why did why did I why was I telling that story now? I have no idea. Tell me, we were talking about sales. Yeah, sales. Nobody really wants to talk to a salesperson. Um, there's like an initial reactionary defense response that everybody has. Oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. I know. I'm sorry. It was uh, because they asked me if I wanted to update my voter registration because yep. it was in Brunswick County. Yep. Now it's back in New Hanover County, and I said, "Yeah," and I'm registered independent, and <laughs> so I didn't realize that the majority of the door knockers are knocking on the doors of registered independents. They're not trying to okay. they're not trying to convert yeah. somebody that's a republican to a democrat yeah that makes sense i'm also registered independent and that explains why i'm getting so much mail yeah nona there was two or three times when nona's like hey did you see that guy on the camera i was like gone picking up the kids from school or at the gym whatever it was and she's like there was a guy he pulled up only walked up to our house and then got back into his car and drove away do you know like why he was here i was like no and then of course there's a little hang tag on the door yeah happened like three or four times before I saw somebody else post about it and they're like, yeah, they, they only knock on the doors of independence. I'm like, I mean, that makes sense <sighs> though. Right. Cause you're somebody that can be swung either way. Yeah. Right. So they're like, we're going to talk to him. Yeah. He's going to vote for us this year. <laughs> so I, I straight up told the dude on Sunday, um, dude knocked on the door. Dogs are barking, going crazy. I opened the door and I said, the quickest way for me to vote against your candidate is for you to knock on my door. Yeah. And he was like, off. <laughs> Do you want yeah. my vote? Yeah. Then don't come here. <laughs> yeah. I was like, take me off whatever list I'm on, throw away, don't hang stuff on my door, just go away. <laughs> Wherever your headquarters is at, just put it put it on the do not yep. disturb yep. list. So I, I don't know if it's that way where you guys live in Brunswick County, but um, Brunswick County as a whole, unless the, the town or city that you're in um, has an ordinance that says otherwise, 
Um, it's all um, no solicitation. Okay. You can have anybody for any reason. If they knock on your door, mm -hmm. there, there's like four or five requirements that they have to meet even if they are allowed to solicit. Mm -hmm. But if they come to your door and they solicit, you can call PD and have them trespass the first time. And I started doing that heavily Yeah. towards the end of when I had my house. Every single time somebody came to my house and wanted to knock and try to sell me something or whatever, yeah. I'm like, you're on camera and I'm on the phone with PD right now. I'm have you trespass. And they're like, yeah. w w w I'm, I'm allowed to do this. No, you're not. Was there any signage to give them a heads yeah. up like, hey, yeah. Don't talk to me. There's signage at both uh, entrances. But of course, what they're told is, oh, I didn't see it or it was covered up or, you know, the sign was too. Th there's always some excuse, right? Like, mm -hmm. and who's looking? Most people don't look at those signs. A lot of people, they'll see the sign, you know, it's about this big yeah. and it has like the camera on it, right? Yeah. It's like security cameras in in the area or whatever, you know, yeah. like you have no idea where they actually are or if they even exist. Yeah. For, for the old neighborhood, Mallory Creek, it was like at the clubhouses. They weren't okay. surveilling the neighborhood. It was just yeah, at the just clubhouses. Right there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just I got sick of it because they were doing it, you know, all the time. And I parked in the driveway and because I work from home, it always looks like somebody's home because somebody yeah, was always home. Always home. Yeah. So they were always coming to my house because there's a car on the driveway. Man, I I wanted I wanted to get one of those uh, you know, signs that's like like a contract or something. <laughs> if you're talking on my door, it's twenty five dollars a yeah. minute. <laughs> have you seen the Have you seen the doormats where it's like come back with a warrant or something like that? Or, <laughs> no, I haven't seen those. Yeah. but I, I imagine they're definitely out there. Yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna ignore it anyways. But um, That's true. I've always I I, I want to have like something up like a booby trap or something. Yeah, yeah. Like because we have like these little Halloween decorations stuff, and some yeah. of them have like motion sensors. Yeah. And I want to have it be able to trigger, like send me an alert on my phone. And I know I can do this. I have a, I have a whole bunch of electronics and Arduinos. I could program this myself. Yeah. But get like cans of like silly string and like <laughs> fart spray. That's funny. That's what I was thinking about. I was like, yeah. this would be a funny booby trap. Like, yeah. the, you, the come, you come up onto the porch <laughs> to solicit and I see you on the camera and I don't know who you are. Well, I'm hitting that button <laughs> and you're getting covered. Have you seen those like um, those trap things or whatever? When those like the porch pirates and it spreads all the glitter Mark and Rover, stuff. Yeah, and you just do one of those in the front. Like, yeah. oh hey, what's up? <laughs> Good he, to see you. He gets more and more sophisticated with them all the time. And, I know. But now it's to the point where people are looking for it specifically because mm -hmm. they know that he puts phones and stuff in them to be yeah. able to track them. Yeah. So now they're like, oh sweet, there's five there's five hundred dollars of phones in there. <laughs> yeah, you're stealing a a fake box, a booby yeah. trap box, but depending on how many phones he puts in there. Is that I think I think one of the boxes one year they did like four because they wanted... They wanted all angles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're like four. I mean, they weren't like the newest phone or whatever, yeah. but... Still. Yeah. If you're if you're, lo if you're already porch buying, the extra money's probably nice. You're yeah. like, oh, I'll just go turn these in, get 30 bucks a phone. Yeah. Just made 120 bucks. Yep. So they have... He's done all kinds of stuff, and now he said that he's not really doing that anymore, but I suspect it's... He wants people to think he's not doing it and anymore. He's get him. <laughs> yeah, but they made this. They made this thing. Have you seen all the videos of him over the years? I've seen a couple of them. Yeah, probably I don't know, 10, 15 videos. I mean, he's done quite a few. Yeah, they made a thing where this box, the side, it was like a like a storage type box. You know, you know those things that you can buy so that like your Amazon driver can put something in it and yes. lock it. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. They repurposed one of those where it had like a side door. Okay. And they motorized the uh, doormat so they okay. would sit the box on the doormat and it had a uh, uh, wireless charger built in inside the box okay so at night the person didn't have to go out there and move it yeah it would just drive itself into the box and charge and That's then pretty cool. at the beginning of the day it would drive back out <laughs> it's yeah like, all right hey my stuff is in here it's safe it's secure yeah Hell yeah <laughs> oh dude but I'm at, all the engineering he used to work for nasa he worked for yeah. nasa and i believe apple as well okay yeah, I think I'd seen that, that he was like a NASA engineer. Like, he's he's a smart dude. Like, yeah. he knows what he's doing, and that's why he's able to build all these cool contraptions. Yeah. Like, what a good use of, like, uh, your degree. It's like, I'm going to I'm gonna do fun stuff. This is why I became an engineer. Yep. I, didn't, I don't care about the angle of this thing. <laughs> I want to build stuff. So they he came out with that um, Crunch Labs. Um, what's it called? The Crunch, Crunch Box? I don't think that's right. Um, I don't know. But, like, two, three years ago, something like that, they came out with it. Where it's like a, it was one of those subscription things. They still do it, mm -hmm. and they started with 
uh, like entry level it was supposed to be for like eight to 12 year olds or six to four. I don't know what the age range was, whatever. It's like beginners. Like it's a, it's a toy still, mm-hmm. but there's engineering concepts and things that go into it. And you have, you learn all these different, yeah. I've seen them. I, I feel like I've seen it at, um, Barnes and Noble or something like it's like huh. something you can buy. That's like, uh, that would be talks and about, uh, like it talks about, um, engineering types of things like it just teaches you cool yeah, stuff yeah yeah what were you about to say oh just I, so i got it for the kid it was like their summer camp so instead of it coming monthly it came weekly okay. for the summer i didn't do it this year because i saw there was overlap where it was some of the things were the same as the year prior and i was like that's kind of dumb i yeah. guess i mean it'd be cool if you could choose yeah if you could say oh i want to do the first years and, and not the second years i want to do this. but to to sell it again is the the camp camp crunch labs i think is what it's okay. called um, to sell it like that and then reuse some of the old stuff. So people are paying several hundred dollars for this and then they're going to get a duplicate or multiple duplicates. Yeah, that doesn't sound cool. Yeah. But he made a new one for older kids and adults called the hack pack, I think is what, and it's okay. much, much more involved. What are they doing? It's a bunch of robotics. So the one that they promote the most is like this, uh, ro- this little tur- turret. It's like a nerf turret. But it has motion sensing and face tracking yeah, and stuff, yeah. so you can track somebody around the room. Sounds like fun. Yeah, <laughs> I, want, I I like this uh, little thing that I saw. Of, like somebody built a little radar thing, and it's got a little laser on, it and it shoots mosquitoes out of the air. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was I, like, oh, I want I want one of those. <laughs> have, have you seen the? Uh, it's called the assault, assault something assault. The assault gun. You're talking yeah. about the one where you like, ah, you yeah, take out. Uh, it's like assault flies and stuff. Yeah. There's a cooler one that I've seen that came out recently. It's like a uh, revolver, and it uses a CO2 cartridge instead of pump. So, like, you can just... Uh, <laughs> that'd be nice. Yeah, so it's pretty cool looking. The only problem is when you shoot a bunch of salt around your house, and I have to go around and sweep. Yeah, yeah. The wife didn't, didn't <laughs> like that. <laughs> like, oh, I better clean this up yeah. <laughs> before I get in trouble. Dogs Why is there salt, salt embedded all in the furniture? And- no reason. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so the the... Hack pack is pretty cool because there's tiers to it. So mm. say you wanted the whatever the the box and we'll call them toys for ease here. Um, but say you just wanted like what was in there, but you didn't want to have to go through all like programming, learning how to program. Yeah, there's plug and play pre-programmed settings. Okay, and then if you want to actually learn and change it and tweak it, you can as well. And okay. there's like three levels, I believe, for each one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. So um, we bought this thing called 30 Days Lost in Space or something along those lines. Okay. It was an Arduino learning kit. I bought it for Cooper a couple of years ago so he could learn. Because that's what he wants to do is uh, biomedical engineering and um, mechanical engineering, that's stuff like super that. super fancy. Yeah. So we bought it. And what you do is you go through these steps of learning how to uh, program an Arduino uh, write a little bit of code. It's not a lot okay. of it's a lot of it's kind of copy and paste, but it's kind of it's a it's a thirty day long. I mean, you could do it faster, obviously, but mm-hmm. um, you go through each of these steps where you learn, you know, how to wire different things up, how to use these different components, mm-hmm. how to you know test stuff using a breadboard, all these different sensors and lights and uh, displays so you can write stuff to you know push a button, ping yeah. code or whatever, and that will give you something on the display. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do with it. And then it's it ca- super fancy. Yeah. And then it came with a, uh, a laser cut kit, wood kit with, um, oh my gosh, oh, I can't think of what they're called. Um, they rotate. It's just a, it's just like an electric motor, just turn stuff, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so you can build like these little robot stuff. Obviously, you can do whatever you want with it, but they have like a predefined, yeah. like these parts are like Lego, right? Yeah. You yeah, have you, your instructions. This piece goes here, this piece goes here. Yeah, you have instructions, but then you can tear it all apart and build whatever you want out of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, user's choice, dealer's choice. Yeah. We've been thinking about doing some stuff because we have, we have sensors for like, uh, like moisture sensors, humidity sensors, there's laser transmitters and receivers. There's infrared tra- um, uh, lasers. There's all kind. There's speakers. There's, there's little all the stuff inside those kits to build. Yeah, <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, yeah, that's super cool though, because it's like you get to learn something super u- new and unique. That's a useful skill to be able to bring anywhere. Versus like 
Legos is fun, but it's just yeah. a couple of blocks. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I built a built a castle. <laughs> and now with all the different AIs like ChatGPT and Google Gemini and all the other ones, you can tell it. Do you remember those uh, recipe apps? Or not? Not even recipe. There, there used to be like a drink, like a bartender app. Yeah, so I remember could, that. You could say, I have this, 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 and this, yeah, and this, I want this. Yeah. What can I make with it? Yep. And they're like, oh, you can do, you know, you can do a margarita. You can do this. You can do, yeah, all yep. the different types of drinks. I remember that app because I, yep. <laughs> in, uh, in the Army, I was like, I think they had it in the Army, like when we were in the Army back in, what, 2011, Probably. 13, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah, because I remember just being like, I've got all this stuff, and I don't want to go pay for it at a bar. <laughs> yep. So that's kind of what I equate like the AI models to now is you can say, I have all these parts because everything's got, you know, a unique mm -hmm. serial number or whatever on yeah. it. And you can say, I have all this, what kind of things can I do with it? Yeah. And it'll say, Oh, you can take this part and this part and this yeah. part and you can make this, or here's a code snippet for it. And just, yeah. Boom. Easy mode. Just boom. Yeah. Boom. I, I, I like it. Cause I do that kind of stuff. I'm like, I have these things or this, like, even with the real estate, it's like, okay, I've got this unique situation. I've dealt with it this way, this way. Is there a different uh, approach that somebody else might take? And it gives me different ideas to kind of like bounce my ideas off of. It's like, oh, okay. It's like having somebody else to bounce ideas off of that you don't have to like physically call to get their input. It's just yep. like, yeah, okay, here it is. Okay. Yeah, this works, this works. That doesn't work for sure. That doesn't work. This does. <laughs> There's a, um, they, they released, and this was a couple of years ago. I was in like the beta for it. It's called Notebook LLM or Notebook LLM, something like that. And it's a, you can take, say you have like a research project or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can upload all of your PDFs and any images and documents and links to books and research and things like that. And then you can ask it very specific questions mm -hmm. about that and, and build out whatever, you know, your project is. Yeah. And then they have another one called CoLab. And I mean, it's collaboration mm -hmm. lab. Yeah. And it's for writing code and, and things like that. And dude, I've done so many dumb little quirky projects. I'm like, how can I monetize this? And I just, I can't figure out what to do it. Is CoLab kind of like uh, GitHub and things like that? Or so, uh, yes and no. CoLab lets you actually run instances and stuff right. With, so without having to go through setting up Google Cloud Platform mm -hmm. and App Engine instances and doing everything like that, you you kind of just run through and you say, I need uh, these snippets or I need you know um, these libraries mm -hmm. from GitHub mm -hmm. and I want to do this with it and you can build it out and it's you can have like people working on like a Google sheet or a word document mm -hmm. together. Like mm -hmm. everybody can be working on it all at the same time. Okay. That's handy. Yeah. <laughs> this is, all right. We've got all these minds. We're going to put them all together and just see yep. where it goes. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I've been trying to figure out some stuff. I want to just have all that stuff sitting in there. I've got my, my flipper zero, which do you know what that is? Mm -mm. It's a, uh, basically all in one penetration testing and hacking tool, whatever. Um, can use it to like brute force garage doors. Okay. I took my gym key card. So they gave me a, a full, like, you know, debit card, credit card yeah, size yeah. RFID card. Mm -hmm. And I uh, scanned the RFID code off there and I bought a pack off Amazon of the key tags. Okay. That are programmable. Okay. And so I pulled it off there and then I programmed it as a key tap to put it on my keychain so I didn't have to have the card with me all yeah, the time. Yeah, you just have that little, yep. little button. Yep. That's kind of cool. I had a buddy that told me something that was like one of those things, but it's called a pineapple or something. And basically, if you're raspberry like, pie, I'm not sure exactly yeah. what it's called, but <laughs> <laughs> he was mentioning it to me. I'm not super, super tech savvy. I kind of like dipped my toes in things. Yeah. But he was telling me about it. He's like, you know, this is why you don't want to use your Wi Fi on a local network or whatever, because somebody can just have one of these things and they can pull everything that you're oh, doing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it might be pineapple. We're, okay, I saw this years ago. Um, people do it at like tech conferences and stuff, and they try and not get caught. It's like a whole yeah. game for yeah, them. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's in cybersecurity, so yeah. like he was telling me about it. And he's like, "This is why you don't want to do this stuff." Yeah. I'm like, "I mean, I'm still going to use Wi-Fi, but it's good to know that that can be out there." So I'll just kind of be looking for somebody looking suspicious in the area. <laughs> so if you've ever if you've ever connected to an open network. Like, you know, you go downtown or whatever, mm -hmm. there could be like an AT&T or... Yeah, the coffee shop. Spectrum, yeah. yeah. And there's no password set on it. Mm -hmm. 
and you've ever connected to that, anytime your device sees that network again, it automatically connects. Yeah. Over. And that's what they're betting on that they're betting on you having connected to a generic okay. open Wi-Fi at some time they can pull from and, and didn't use a VPN. And now you're walking around a convention center and your phone automatically or laptop, whatever automatically jumps onto that network. Okay. And all they're doing is intercepting all of your network traffic and packets okay. and everything. Cause it's go, cause it's got the message sent to the message received and they're going in the middle of it. Yep. It's kind of how I understand yeah, it. Middle of man attack. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting to know. <laughs> Dude, there's, there are people, there's a, a channel on YouTube that I really like. Um, I can't think of what it's called. Anyways, this guy, it's smarter every day. I've, I've heard of Smarter Every Day. So he did uh, a collaboration with researchers from the University of Michigan, which, of course, I'm wearing a Michigan hoodie right now. <laughs> um, got my Goku shirt on. <laughs> this, this guy, these researchers from the University of Michigan figured out a way to modulate laser pulses that, like, the sensors, so, like, the smart speakers and stuff like that and thermostats, mm -hmm. things like that in your house that have... Um, microphones for you to be able to talk mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. The the sensor that they use is also sensitive to light. Okay. They're just, you don't use light to communicate with yeah. them, but they can still, the sensor itself can still receive and interpret mm -hmm. that light. So they figured out a way to program these lasers to be able to give commands through people using like infrared so you can't even see it. Somebody could be standing out, you know, in the middle of the night or whatever, mm -hmm. and if they have clear line of sight to like a Nest thermostat mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, they so can like that they saw that uh, Honeywell or something, yeah, right? They can communicate to devices on the network. And if say your garage door or your door lock, if you have a smart lock or something like that, mm -hmm. and you have it set up all through the same like Google Home or whatever all the other ones are, mm -hmm. they were able to send commands to like the speakers to unlock doors and open garage doors. That's wild. With a laser. <laughs> yeah. That that kind of reminds me of the thing where I guess like uh so I saw something similar where they were able to uh, use the Wi-Fi network to be able to map out the interior layout of mm -hmm. your house. And they're just using the network that's already available. Yeah. Um, there's actually, there's a couple companies that have done that for a while and it used to be for like industrial and commercial applications mm -hmm. so that you can, not only does it do that, but you can take your access points like Ubiquity, mm -hmm. I think does this. You can take them and plug them in you know, in an area roughly where you think you want it to be. Yeah. And then have the network come on and say, okay, map out where everything is, all the walls, and then find the dead spots. So when you're mounting it onto your ceiling or whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, okay, if it's in this room, it's only going to give me, you know, Wi-Fi outside. I don't want it outside. I want it throughout the house. Yeah. Maybe I'll mount it over here instead. So that way it's not like um, penetrating the walls yeah. to the outside spot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. They, so I have an app on my phone. I've had it forever. I actually use it to help one of my neighbors track something down a couple of years ago, which is, that's all. I'll tell that story in a minute, but. Um, Look forward to it. <laughs> it's called, it's called Wi-Fi AR, just augmented reality. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you just walk around with your, so while you're connected to a network, mm -hmm. you can map out the signal strength. Oh yeah. So you just walk around your house and you can see, you know, where you have dead spots and stuff. That, I think AT and T has that on their thing for their uh, Wi Fi network. Possibly. Like you can turn it on, and it's like red in this spot, and it turns green as you get closer. Uh, you know? So you can kind of be like, okay, this spot's a dead spot. I need to put a mesh network over here. And yeah. So, it out. so this maps it out in your on your phone's camera, so you can visually see it as okay. you're like walk, like you can walk over into the corner, okay. and then walk away and turn around. And you can look and see what the uh, the signal strength is. That's more fancy than the other one. Yeah, <laughs> the other one you have to physically be standing there, and be like, okay. This one's dead. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to worry about it in this house, though. We, I have, <laughs> I have two, well, I have two different VLANs, and I'm running two different networks, and I have it set. There, I have super high power networking equipment, so my neighbors can't interfere. Anyways, I probably interfere with theirs. But that's not my problem. <laughs> You're just pushing it out. Yeah. You're like it's your problem. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, um, like the the router that you saw on there, yeah, that is is the main. I think it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's the main uh, router and network switch. And then there's also um, Google Home mm -hmm. network mesh network. Mm -hmm. That's for all of our IoT system, all like all, any IoT stuff that we have, cameras and everything else. Anything that's IoT that's on Wi-Fi. That is what's IoT? Internet of Things. Oh, 
Okay. So like devices that just need to communicate with each other, okay. things that don't have matter support and stuff like that. Um, and then, so the router that's down here have another one that's uh, a bridge access point because mm -hmm. the computer that I gave Cooper doesn't have Wi-Fi. Okay. So, so it's got to be directly hardlined into. Yeah. So it's up in his room, and that is also a Wi-Fi seven uh, access point. So we have very, very, very good, internet. robust internet here in the <laughs> yeah. south. Yeah. You're not going to be lacking in any room. No. Like I've got the internet. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> I promise. So like I. I keep things very like hyper segmented and stuff. So we have guest networks that I can turn on and off. Um, so say people come over for like chili cook off or whatever. When is that, by the way? <laughs> November. Okay. First weekend, I believe. Ah, I think I'm going to be out of town. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. This, this has been like an ongoing thing for years where we just can never line up yeah. <laughs> on the right thing. So I, what I do that because I don't want people to be able to control any device on my network for any reason. Yeah. So it completely segments them, VLANs them, so that whatever people are on the guest network, mm -hmm. they could potentially mess with each other if they know how to do that or anything. Yeah. But they, they can't, can't mess with your actual hub. <laughs> yeah. They can't like print something from the printer. They can't use Wake on LAN to turn any of the devices on it. Because I have Wake on LAN for uh, two of this one and then the one in my office. So I can remotely... If I need to remote in and I know my desktop is off, mm -hmm. I can remote into the network and send command over LAN for my computer to boot up, That's and then cool. I can remote into it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you don't have to have somebody physically here to be able to get access to any yep. of your devices. You're like, nah, I got it. So when I had to travel for work a lot previously, this thing is not very powerful, my laptop that is, and I'd be like, oh, I need to do something or I need to render something out or whatever. I would just go remote into my desktop, do all the work through my desktop, and then still have my laptop to be able to do yeah. it. I'd be like, oh, I got this render running at home. And they're like, oh, you don't need to be yeah. like, plugged in or anything? That got that super powerful computer over here. You're <laughs> like, yeah, I don't need the, you don't gotta worry about this. It's yeah. fine, it'll work. Yeah. yeah, that's why, I mean, all the stuff, all the podcast stuff, like this, this is like consumer, like prosumer, I think is the term that people yeah, it's use. Like for right it. between the yeah. best stuff and, the bottom it's yeah. like right it's right at the middle it's like a little bit above the middle actually so like you can get a 20 dollar one this is probably what 200 yeah 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 <laughs> i was gonna say looks like maybe a 200 dollar mic so <laughs> yeah you can get like thousand dollar whatever microphones and you can set up all kinds of booms and do things you know because they have like directional microphones mm -hmm. you have these the, the omnidirectionals yeah, yeah yeah oh they have a they have this really cool one road even makes one um I couldn't figure out what the hell it was for at first. And then when I was reading into it, because the the name of it was what was throwing me off. I'm like, what? Mm. Like what what does that even mean? So it's this little array of microphones that you could set like in a room. Okay. And say for example, you have like a a concert hall or something like that, or like opera house, whatever, mm -hmm. and you can set it up. And if people wanted to have like an immersive audio experience, like okay. Dolby Atmos, yeah, yeah, where you have like directional audio, yeah, so yeah. you're wearing your so headphones, you like hear it and yeah. changing directions, yeah, yeah. that's, that's what it's cool. for. That's super cool. <laughs> I think that kind of stuff is awesome. Like even with the um, like the Apple AirPods or whatever. I, I know that you're anti Apple, but <laughs> um, I like that they have that spatial audio that you can turn and you can hear stuff. In yeah, I've, ways. so I don't. I mean, other than like Grand Theft Auto, once in a while when like the kids want to play or something, I don't really like play games. Yeah. And that's really the only media that utilizes that correctly. It's yeah. like if I'm watching a movie or something like that and I turn my head, I don't want, I don't want to not hear what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's accurate. Cause it's like, Oh, that cool thing happened over there. What'd they say? Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> so if you have like a Dolby Atmos, uh, stereo or like sound system theater, whatever, and you have that like packet audio. Are you familiar with Dolby Atmos? I, I'm, f I know what it is. I'm not uh, technical with. It. So, rather than having like channel audio, right, like left and right, front mm -hmm. and rear, whatever, mm -hmm. they have. Uh, it's like packet based audio. Okay. And so, if you know the room shape and where all the speakers and everything are within the room the system will send only the specific sounds required to the speakers 
where they should be sent to. So if you really had, you know, like the back in the day when you had like the surround sound um, Mm -hmm. demos where like a plane would fly over your head or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this, because it can send instead of left and right, it can send just the specific packets to the specific speakers. So it makes it actually sound like that's really happening. Okay. And obviously when you turn your head, if you're in a theater or something like that, the, you're turning towards or whatever away from whatever sound is coming yeah. from. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's um, the, the uh, PDX theater. That's what they use for their audio. Whether or not the movie supports it or not is a different story. But yeah. if you go to like a really big budget movie mm-hmm. and go to all P- that stuff and go to PDX. Yeah. That's I'll have to check it out. Yeah. What do you think is the next big budget movie that they're going to play over there that would be worth seeing? Um, honestly, I don't even know what's coming out. I have Anytime no idea either. soon. Ever since all the Marvel stuff kind of dropped off, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, all the cool stuff's gone. <laughs> Dude, so we watched Deadpool 3 in the theater, and I was, there was something about it that I was kind of disappointed in. Just about the, the actual theater experience. It was, okay. It, there was something, it was almost like they used the wrong version Mm-hmm. of the the movie in that so we paid the extra money to go to pdx yeah and then it wasn't pdx quality oh that sucks but i have the i have the 4k um uh dolby was it so when you have dolby vision which is their hdr and dolby atmos when you have both of them it's called dolby theater okay and this tv supports both of them so i had it dude i, I was didn't even know that tv was there i was <laughs> I was watching that, so that's 4K OLED, uh, 120 hertz. Dude, it was. I walked was in. Sweet. <laughs> I walked into Costco, and for something, I think it was actually something for the podcast, like one of the like our desk chairs or something like that that we have. I walked in there and I walked past the TV displays. Mm-hmm. Had no intention of buying a TV or anything. Yeah. They had this one. They had a floor model that was mounted, and it was marked down with the manager signature thing yeah. to two thousand dollars from like thirty nine. 79 or something like that i think sweet yeah so i and i had just broke my other 75 77 inch tv whatever it was wasn't with a handstand was it no this <laughs> this time it was even worse <laughs> what happened cooper and i were moving it from the other house mm-hmm. and when i took it off the wall i had one hand at the top one hand at the bottom and my thumb pushed through the screen and broke shattered the entire screen I bet you were salty when that happened. Dude, I was so <laughs> mad. Oh. I sat it down on the couch and I just looked at it because you could see it with, even without the screen being on. You could see like that Where it does layer separation. <laughs> so it, 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 it spidered down there, but it was like the like the panels. Like the, oh, like they like, came apart. Yeah. Oh, and I'd, I'd been heartbroken. I'd have been like, oh, no. I, I looked at it. I was like, I don't want to turn it on. I was like, let's just get it over to the other house and I'll see if I can fix it. And I got it over here and I brought it in here and I told them. I told Nona what happened. She bought that as a replace. I had bought a 65 after the handstand thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she bought the 70, 75 or whatever last year, the year before for my birthday. Yeah. And I was like really happy with it. It was uh it wasn't an OLED though. And she she knew that I wanted an OLED, but she was like, I want to get him this for his birthday. Yeah. It was awesome. I loved it. Because yeah. for most content, you can't, especially sitting like all the way over there, you can't really tell. But I, I brought it in and I told her. And she was like, just throw it away. And I was like, no, I'm going to try and fix this. I'm gonna, I do the same thing. I'm like, no, 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 no. I can, tr- I can fix this. Yeah. Let me, let me try. Yep. And I 90% of the time don't succeed. <laughs> yeah. So, so the 65 was already hired. The other one was still at the other house. And so I, I brought it in and I was like, she finally like convinced me. She was like, it wasn't, it was like $700 or something like that. It's not a big mm. deal. I was like, I was mad. I was mad at myself because I wanted to watch football on it and yeah. everything like that. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm walking through there and I see that and I called Nona. I was like, I'm coming home like right now yeah. and I need your car because I'm going <laughs> right back to Costco right now. Because I, I didn't want it in the bed of my truck, right? Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hear it. It's just another broken TV. <laughs> so I, I, I come back over here. I get the Suburban. I drive all the way right back over there. And I thought I was going to get the model that was on display, like that was plugged yeah. in. Yeah. And I'm talking to the person on the floor and she's like looking for the box because I guess they keep the boxes right there on the rack. Yeah. Right? And she pulls out. She's like, oh, I think we have one more. And there's another couple standing in front of the display talking to somebody else. And he had just said, 
oh, we, and I had talked to this. I was like, I'll be right back. Please hold it for me, right? Yeah. So this couple is standing there talking, and no one was like, hey, those people are asking for the same TV. Yeah. And I've got like the little rolling cart like right there. I'm ready to go. And so she slides it out. She puts it in there and we like start carting it off in this. Guy, this guy's like, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> yep, yep. This is nothing you can do yep, about it. Too. Yep. You're just, you're just sad as yeah. it walks away. Literally. <laughs> Dude, I was like, oh my, if I hadn't been here and I hadn't seen, I would not like, I would still be using that 60. I would still be happy with that. I'd still be using that old 65 yeah. inch, you know, 4k LCD, whatever it is. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, as soon as I got that brought it in, uh, Nona was like, cause the, the panel itself is like this, it's this thick all the way around. Yeah. That's not bad at all. So the, <laughs> like the, thin. where like the motherboard and like the speaker components, mm-hmm. stuff like that are, it's like, it gets thicker or like where yeah. the, where it mounts to where on the, the, the stand where the components are. Yeah. Yeah. But like the, the rest of the TV all the way around. So we pull out, we pull it out of the box right in here. And I was like, I don't want to touch this thing. <laughs> It's it's super super fancy. You take it yeah. and you put it up because yeah. if I touch it and break it, I'm yeah, gonna be actually, sad again. I actually think that that screen is thinner than the panel for my laptop. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, it's crazy how technology's like changed. Because I remember I had like a uh, a laptop that I bought in like 2010, and that thing was clunky. It was yep. and it was like fancy at the time. And then five ten years later, it's like this big old brick it's like thicker than this thing and heavy yeah and slow <laughs> dude watching the um the spacex uh starship test launch on sunday oh, i missed that how was it dude it was awesome and being able to watch on here and all the plasma and sparks and everything oh dude awesome it's you can you can tell the difference when like you're like a av audio video file whatever like mm-hmm. i am yeah yeah there's no like banding in the colors or anything okay. like that. So it was like all just cause every, every pixel is self lighting and you know, there's not dimming zones. Yeah. Like, yeah, dude. Uh, Cash and I were sitting right here watching. I was like, this is so much better. This is freaking awesome. You don't know what you don't have until you get yeah. something better. And you're like, Oh yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I messed up yeah. <laughs> or I didn't mess up, but you know, it's something to be like, to have a point of comparison to see it and go, okay, I had no idea that there was this good a technology that's out in the world. Like, I don't even want you to turn it on because then I'm going to be bummed because I'm going to be like, oh, dude, it's it's super <laughs> bright. Like, so there's, th- it has like different AI modes that you can use where it's like if you're watching movies or watching TV or content or whatever. And obviously it adjusts like game mode, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Yeah. It does all this stuff automatically. But there's been, there were times initially because of how bright it is. When you have like a white scene on the TV. Oh, yeah. It just blinds you like a flashbang. Dude, I'll be sitting out here like, 11 o'clock at night, like getting ready to doze off. And then I'm watching something. It's just a <laughs> flash on the screen. I'm like, why is it daytime in this house right now? <laughs> Did I die? Yeah. Where, what is this? <laughs> the, uh, the scene in uh Deadpool three, the opening scene mm-hmm. where he's in the snow. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. Well worth um, it. It's awesome. But it's so where, show. <laughs> where he's dancing in the snow. So you have all the snow and you know, it's like gray and gloomy, mm-hmm. but it's still like bright because of all the snow. And then his red shoot, uh, suit contrasting in the scene. Yeah. Dude, I watched, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. I like the Deadpool series. It's, it's good. And yeah. Ryan Reynolds does just a fantastic job of it. Cause there was like that other Deadpool, like what? 2007. It was just, Oh, it what, was, that was Ryan Reynolds. Was too. it him yeah. in that one too? Yeah. yeah. He didn't do a good job on that one. <laughs> well, that was because uh, that was in the Wolverine or Wolverine. Yeah, was Wolver- it the Wolverine or Wolverine? There's like two, weren't there? It was like Origins or something stupid like that. I think it was something. Yeah, Deadpool Origins or some, Wolverine yeah. Origins, something like that. Yeah, he didn't do a good job on that one, in my opinion. Well, he he got screwed over on that, and that's why when they did when they filmed the first one, mm-hmm. that's why he leaked. And it's like somebody leaked, it and he's like, you know, somebody. <laughs> yeah. Because the the studio didn't want to release the movie, and so he re- he leaked the test footage, and people were like, please, just send it to theaters right now. Like we want <laughs> put it in, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's the, that's the only reason why the, those three movies even exist. That's amazing. Because yeah. like he did a um, like all of them are better, all three of them, I think. And oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say the thing that sucks though is so the studios obviously they have you know their long-term goals and agendas for yeah. things that they want to do. But how many other movies like that have 
been made or uh, like some stage of production studios like, eh, we don't really want to do it. And then the actors or whoever's in it are scared of whatever the repercussion is. Cause I'm sure almost oh, all, yeah. they, they have a lot of them have something in their contract. I'm sure we're like non-disclosure or yeah, whatever can't else. Can't talk about it. Yeah. Otherwise we'll see you for whatever. Yeah. yeah. So imagine the balls that he had to have to be like, I'm going to do it anyway. This is either going to come out or they're going to sue me out of existence. And then it came out. So he won. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it became like a great, like everybody likes it. Right. Yeah. So it's a great hit. So they're not mad. They're like, Hey, we made money. I bet if it would have been like the flip, like the shoes on the other foot kind of thing where it's like, it wasn't good. Yeah. There probably would have been some kind of repercussion, but just the fact that it came out and it was just awesome. Deadpool is like one of my favorite characters. So I really like that. And Wolverine, which is funny that they're well, tied together. <laughs> well, now all of these, the studios and like the streaming services and stuff rather than like completely withholding something or mm -hmm. even potentially withholding it and just taking like the tax write off and on the losses and everything. Yeah. Now they're putting stuff out to streaming and then when it doesn't do well, they just delete it and it's gone forever and you can't yeah. buy like physical. So there's a bunch of movies that I have that don't exist anywhere else to really? buy or stream or yeah. Like what kind of movies? Um, what was, there was a, there was a Disney one that was like a space one. Um, treasure, treasure, treasure planet. <laughs> no, the old it, one? It, no, it's, it's, it's a recent movie. Um, oh, I didn't Disney even hear anything about it. Deleted movies. I didn't even know that this was a thing. Canceled. It was Disney like moon movies. or space. Moon. Crater. 2023 Crater. Disney plus original movie about a group of friends exploring a crater on the moon was removed from the streaming service on June 30th, 2023. 48 days after its release. That's crazy. Why do they pull it out? Like, is it just because it costs them too much to keep running it? No, because they, after a certain period of time, they can claim the losses. Oh, okay. And they, so they don't want it to make any more money because okay. now it benefits them on their taxes. They're not profiting, Yeah, but they're going to pay loss on taxes. So they do it intentionally maybe? Yeah. Okay. There was a, what was it Batgirl or Batwoman or something like that that was supposed to come out? The oh, whole, yeah. The whole movie got completely filmed, edited, yeah. and like did poorly on test screen. So Warner Brothers was like, eh, whatever, we're not going to release <laughs> it. <a loss. laughs> yeah. That's wild. Cause and, I remember, I feel like I saw a preview for it too. And now that you're saying yeah. it, and it's like, I don't think I ever saw it though, like yeah. in theater ever. And, and <laughs> so that's kind of where people started realizing what was going on because people were saying, even if it doesn't go to theaters, like maybe I want to watch it. Even if it sucks, maybe I want to watch it. Yeah. And then people started saying, well, they're not going to because they're going to eat the loss. Yeah. And people are like, Oh my God, you guys really suck. Yeah. You paid all these actors or maybe you didn't. Maybe. <laughs> and, and maybe <laughs> <laughs> you might've paid them. Yeah. And now the content's not even come out. Could you imagine if you had like multiple projects that you wanted to work on that yeah. maybe had some sort of overlap and you had to say no to one. Yeah. And then the one that you do film never <laughs> comes out. Show up. That would, I'd be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, this was my shot. You wasted <laughs> a year of my chance. life. Yeah, you yeah. wasted a year or two years yeah. or whatever, depending on what it <laughs> this is. This could have been the thing that made me famous. <laughs> yeah. Dude, like, right, oh man, that I would, would be. suck. I'd be mad. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like. You don't get the, you don't get the residuals from like yeah. it being syndicated yeah. or going, you know, people, a re-release and whatever, yeah. however many years, which makes me wonder, because studios will do that periodically. They'll. Yeah you know, uh, like re was it, um, upscale, like an old, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll like, um, remaster it. Yeah. Right. So like the lion King from 1990 is now a little bit better with color and little pixels yeah. and things like that, yeah. that they didn't have the technology for back then, but they do now. So I wonder if, if one day these studios or one, any of them will be like, we have this back catalog of stuff that never came out. Yeah. And we have a contact gap to fill. Let's just throw it all out there. Put it in. Yeah. It's like, eh, no worries. And we don't have to pay anybody. It's already done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, don't worry. That actor died. We don't got to pay. And, and, <laughs> and because you, you know, your taxes and your write offs and your claims and stuff like that are, you know, year to year, I'm, I don't see why they couldn't do that. Yeah. Oh, we took a loss on it last year, but now we're going to profit from this year. Totally. Yeah. I, I'm obviously not a tax expert, so don't quote me on this. Yeah. Same. But that would make complete sense to me. Yeah, like they have all this stuff that they can just be like, okay, now it's time to monetize. Yeah. I took a loss this year, obviously, because I paid, you know, $5.3 million to 
pay all these actors to be here. Yeah. Now this year I'm going to make 5.3. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They, yeah. And if if I'm part of the crew, you know, you want that money because they it's not a lot. I have a buddy. Um, his family owns Backwater Guns. Okay. Um, I lived with him for a few years or a few months after I first moved down here. Um, he was in he was an extra, and he did like some of the prop stuff because the the gun shop, you know, they use some of the the firearms from their gun shop. Yeah. Um, Seal Team, maybe. Oh, I like that show. I've, I've seen a couple episodes, but yeah, I've never seen it. But he was in it, and he had to like join the like SAG or whatever it was, mm -hmm. and. He was after it finished. You know, he gets like the monthly residuals check. Mm -hmm. So every time, I don't know, however many thousand people or whatever watch it, he just gets like a thirty dollar check. <laughs> hey, I'll take thirty bucks. Yeah, you, <laughs> that's dinner. <laughs> you do that. You do that literally every month, or you do a, a couple TV shows or movies, yeah. and then over time, now your mortgage is paid by something yeah. you're not even worried. All these residuals just bump, bumping yeah. up. Yeah, it might not. It not, might not be a lot of money. Yeah, but. It covers something. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice. It's kind of like the VA compensation, right? It's yeah. nice to have. It just comes in. It's yeah, just a little extra every month. Yeah, I think being an extra would be fun because, like, you're just going out there and just pretending. You know what I mean, dude, dude, you can go do one of the. Uh, have you ever done it? Mm -mm, no. They have um, they have an app. I don't I don't know what it's called. I did it one time, like six years ago, because a um, a friend was like, "Hey, I'm gonna." go be an extra on the show. They're looking for people like you. And I was like, okay, just cause I'd never yeah. been in it. I wasn't looking to like be famous. I just kind of wanted to experience it and see what it was yeah. like. So it was like, I'm in like a bar scene for some TV shows. I think it was on Hulu or something like okay. that. I don't even know what the show was called. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> but what am I in? <laughs> dude, it's so boring though. Is it? Because you can't actually talk. <laughs> uh, yeah. All of the sound in like any sort of scene like that where they like actors are talking. Yeah. It's actually completely silent and they add the sound in. Like um what is that? What is that term for that? Um sound um like when you add like the sound of a fire to a video yeah. like it's not the real fire that mm -hmm. you're hearing. It's the added of sound yep. of the fire. So like I imagine that the crowd scenes is like it's dead silent like you're talking yep. about and then they just go get a sound bite from somewhere and add it to the scene. Yeah, so they're having like their dialogue over wherever and I'm sitting here and I'm having to have a fake conversation with a person sitting in front of me every single cut. And you're just sitting there and like, all right, action. And you just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're trying to like make something up. <laughs> it's it's completely, you just your brain just goes dead for a minute. You're like, what am I... What am I going to mouth to this person? I don't even know who you are. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. We're on the same page. <laughs> and all like, all like the little prop drinks and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So you can't actually drink them. Yeah. Because they want continuity, but they, it's also because if you have a lot of takes. Yeah. They don't want to have to have you go refill your beer bottle over and over again with water. And, go to the bathroom. Yeah. And all yeah. that stuff. <laughs> So you, you have to sit there and then you know you do the thing, put your tongue into it so that none of the liquid comes out and pretend to drink and sit it down. Do the thing, pretend to drink, set it down. Dude, it was terribly dumb. And we I think we got paid like eighty dollars. For the day. For like six hours of doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, if you got nothing else to do, it sounds like a fun thing to just kind of go do in the, <laughs> for the day. Yeah, the call, whatever it's called, the when they you know, they put out the call for people. Casting call? Yeah, yeah. So in that, when I was reading, it's like bring options, like clothing options for like going out or partying or whatever. And so for one, I have no idea what this production is. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what kind of like partying, like is this a frat party? Is this yeah. a gentleman's club? Like I have no yeah. idea what any, what is going on. So I just bring like four or five options of like my normal clothes, like a button down shirt, a hoodie, a t-shirt, like a pair of shorts, a pair of jeans. Yeah. I get there and they're like, oh, we can't use any of this. Uh, go over to wardrobe and they'll give you clothing. Like, why did I even bring any of yeah, this? <laughs> you yeah. already have it. <laughs> so, yeah. So I have to go over to their wardrobe department. They give me this clothing that doesn't even like fit me. They give me like this really like baggy button down shirt. So I look like some like 90s, you know, like, I don't even know, like a uh, like hired muscle for 
Yeah, so I'm wearing like slacks that are like one size too big, like just yeah. one size too big. And for me, like I typically wear pretty form fitting ish clothes. Yeah. And so I'm wearing like bag dude, like like my shorts can't touch my knees. Like I'm very particular <laughs> about that kind of stuff. I think I saw something that you posted about people with long shorts. Or I, so I, I bought two I bought two brand new pairs of shorts from Under Armour. And I almost never buy clothes online. Yeah. With a couple like this hoodie and a couple of the other ones that I have from it's called Operation Hat Trick. And you there's only like one place you can buy from. It's a it's a nonprofit organization. It's like fan something. Okay. Because it's officially licensed merch. Like this is real Michigan merch. Yeah. Um, but it goes, it's a veteran nonprofit. Okay. Called Operation Hat Trick. That's pretty cool. Operation Hat Trick. Okay. And, and uh so like there's very, very few things I'll buy. This is like super premium. I know it won't shrink. It looks like it's nice. Yeah. Like this it looks is like, heavy. It's like, not a touch. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. That's good quality. And I like the there are the three quarters. I have the another one that I just got. It's like a it's a hockey sweater. It's a hoodie, but it's a hockey sweater. So it has like the the laces and stuff. Mm -hmm. of like an old school OG hockey sweater. Um, but yeah, most clothes like I won't buy. Like I I will not buy jeans, anything like that online because yeah. I know that they're not going to fit right. I'm going to have to right send them size. back. Yeah, and I. I'm the kind of person where if I get something, I order something and it doesn't work or fit or whatever, I just, I don't even send it back, I just throw it away. Yeah. Or give it to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you like this? Perfect. Yeah. I've got something for you. Yeah. Regift. <laughs> yeah. And it was a gift to me, but now it's a gift to you. <laughs> no one gets so mad at me. She's like, just send it back. You're going to refund. I'm like, oh, so I don't want to do work. that. that yeah. yeah. It's a hassle. I got to go do this thing. I got to get it printed off. I got to yep. make sure that's the right place. I got to send it back. Yep. So then, yeah. it, then it might not even get the refund. I got to call them, be like, hey, did you get my package? Yeah, no, I yeah. get it. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> so I, I typically, so when I lived up in Indiana, there was an outlet mall really close by. So I would just go to the Under Armour store. Yeah. And because, you know, the trends and stuff are changing again. Yeah. These, I wouldn't say long, they're not like the 90s, like Fab Five yeah. long basketball shorts, but they're mm -hmm. longer than what I like. Yeah. And it's hard to tell like which fabric or material or whatever it is because the pictures mm. don't really like show. Yeah. And they try to say, oh, the model is six foot, 185 pounds or whatever. And you're, I'm like, okay. But it still doesn't like really help me because the torso could be longer, the legs could be longer, yeah. short, what, you know. So I have to go and actually try stuff on. Yeah. And actually, when I went to Salt Lake City with Nona two years ago, um, or something wrong with, I think I like ripped my jeans or something like that. And she went, I had to, I had to go to Goldman Sachs and I was doing some other stuff. So I have like ripped jeans and she goes to luckily the convention center in the hotel that we were at mm -hmm. was like right next to like a really high end shopping center. And so she went and bought like three different options and brought them back to the hotel. So I'm over at Goldman Sachs doing social media marketing stuff for the gala for the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And then I'm coming back I'm trying on these different jeans and I'm going to the convention center and working on stuff with them. And then, so she had to run in a dress in like 20 degree temperature in Salt Lake city to buy me new pairs. Of jeans. And she bought, like I said, it was like three, maybe even four. And then she, so two of them fit and the other two didn't. So she went back, returned them and she walked. That's like, crazy. Yeah. It, it was 50 degrees out this morning. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's cold. <laughs> and so there was the same kind of thing. We flew from here, uh, or we flew from Raleigh, uh, and it was like 81 or 82 degrees when we left. This yeah. is, it was um, Veterans Day weekend 2022. Okay. And so we flew out, and then we landed out there, and it was snowing. We went to dinner with all of the the leadership team and everything, yeah. the man, uh, owner, whatever you want to call it for the nonprofit. And it's uh, it was at a rooftop restaurant at the, it's a, it was a brand new hotel that I get. It just opened up like the week prior. Mm -hmm. It's a huge like Marriott something and big convention. Like this convention center never even used yet. We were like the first ones to even use it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh there was like a Mexican restaurant or something. It was like a rooftop thing. So my, that's what my profile picture is on Facebook. I can't change. That's we went outside to take a picture in the snow. You can't really tell that it's snowing, but that's what that was. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't do the cold anymore. Like ever since being in the army, I'm like, nah, if I can be where it's hot or warm, I love it hot. Dude, I like it's really hot. I like hoodie weather. Hoodie if weather. I can wear hoodie, shorts, and flip flops, perfect weather for me. Sixty to eighty is my zone. 
It's where I love it. 70 to 80 is the best, but I like actually 65. 65 is the perfect weather for it. Dude, if it would stay like low 80s here and not be humid, I would be a much happier person. The humidity here is <laughs> brutal. Yeah. It's so brutal. She's like, you don't want to go outside or do anything. I'm like, because as soon as I open the door, it starts sweating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just it's a downpour. I don't have any hair, so it just it just does this all the time. Like uh, It's like that Key and Peele skit where uh, I don't remember which one of it is. But like they're asking him a question and he's like nervous and he just starts sweating. Yep, yep. That's what it looks like when I go outside <laughs> or drink those uh, or when I eat those like um, anything hot, actually. Remember when we had those like spicy peanuts or whatever? At one of yeah. Your Ugh, those things were hot. Dude, I forgot about that. Yeah. Somebody because <laughs> I did. I ate a Reaper eight years ago and um, somebody from Florida can't think of his name jason something um he owns a hot sauce company in florida florida man's lunacy is what it's called okay his name's jason something but he he used to send like there's like these challenges and that mm -hmm. was one of them was like the nut it's like five different yeah it's like know, dry mild. rubs on this yeah and uh various different hot sauces and like it was a packy the chip the yeah. chip challenge. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like the one chip or the hottest chip yeah. or whatever it is. Like Reaper, bacon, jerky. Yeah. yeah. All kinds. Of, like just you would like send it to me and I would eat it and I would record it and put it on like Facebook and social media, specifically in Drinker Bros group. And uh, yeah, dude, like there was some stuff they sent that I was like, no, no. <laughs> Not a chance. I remember at that party, like we were trying them. I think I had like a, th it was is one through five, and I think I had like a three, and I was just pouring sweat. Yeah. And I remember Crystal, my wife, she took like the five, and she was unfazed. I was like, what's wrong with you? So <laughs> there's, um, I was watching. How do, you, how do you do that? I was watching a video about the science of how like capsaicin works, and some people like the reason why it doesn't affect a lot of animals, mm -hmm. and the reason why it does affect us, and I don't, I don't know if you actually know this. Do you know the reason why babies and kids typically don't like uh, vegetables and stuff. Uh, it's because it's bitter, like poison. Like yeah. back in the past, that was probably the thing that would kill you. Yeah. And basically, kids are smaller, so it's a lot more potent on them. Yeah. Don't eat leaves because you could yeah. die. <laughs> yeah. It'll murder you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, but I was watching this thing, and apparently, like even dogs don't have the receptors for it. So, really? completely on face. And so, the the plants obviously want birds and squirrels and other animals to eat them because then they'll poop somewhere and the plant yeah. will grow somewhere else, just Make like more. any other plant. And I was yeah. like, but apparently, <laughs> apparently some humans have, it's, it's just like how some people, when they eat, um, uh, cilantro, it they think like, it's soap. Yeah. It tastes yeah. like soap. <laughs> it's, a, it's the same kind of thing. Some people just don't have the gene. Okay. Man, she must be an animal then. <laughs> but I mean, think about it. You don't have, you don't have the gene for something and now you're dead because you ate something and didn't. Oh. That would that would suck. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that episode of House back in the day? The girl that like couldn't feel like her. She had like no um, pain reception in her nervous system or something like that. So she was always getting injured. I think I did. I don't know if it was House that I saw it on, but that sounds familiar. Yeah. But yeah, but, like if you can't feel it, how do you how do you know that you're hurt? Like oh, I broke my oh, leg. Oh, that sucks. Oh, why is my hand melting away? I touched yeah. the stove. Yep. <laughs> you put it down. You're like. Oh, <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, that would be that would probably be the worst. I think that would living that way and always being in fear. Yeah, that would that would be the worst. That would be terrible because it's nice to just not be in fear most of the time. It's like uh, if, I mean, if something's hot or something scary, you just avoid that thing. Think about it, like you're sleeping, your leg goes numb or something like that, so you roll and move over. That yeah. way you don't cut off your circulation, but you yeah. wouldn't know. Yeah. And now your leg has to be amputated because you slept on it wrong. Yeah, that's that would suck. <laughs> I'd be so mad. I'd be like. Come on. Yeah. <gasps> yep. Yeah. Well, speaking of medical nonsense and stuff, Nono, the whole reason she was like, you guys should tell the stories from the army on the, on the podcast. Yeah. What, <laughs> what do you think was the funniest thing that we did in Korea? I don't know. It's probably when we gave, was it, was it Galata? I think you just got married. Did you see that? I saw that. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was like, Hey, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a long time. I yeah. sent, I put a post on there, but I haven't heard back from him yet, but yeah, I think that's when we gave him a shot and then, like, videoed it. <laughs> what, what are you thinking of? Um, so there was a 
there was a day, I can't remember what his name was, Tucker, I think it was his name. Um, we were doing this little, just a competition, starting IVs on each other and, and other people, and we were trying to find like the most obscure, weird veins that we could still hit and drop a line and mm-hmm. administer a bag in. So we were, we had people down in that uh, bay in the headquarters building, mm-hmm. like trying to start, you know, in the back of their calves and in their feet and in their like in their back and yeah. just all these weird places. Of course, this is still flip phone era. <laughs> So unless you had a little point shoot camera, there's no real video of or pictures yeah. of any of this. The only one that I, the only one that I know that we have video of is when Andy, uh, Andy was doing like the uh, commentary, and then uh, like we gave him the Novocaine shot, and then started beating him with the uh, <laughs> with the with like the um, like a metal rod or something. Yeah. <laughs> what do we give him? Like five bucks for that or something? <laughs> Dude, I don't remember. It was <laughs> something ridiculous. Yeah, there like, was, We'll give you a dollar for this. There was all kinds of dumb stuff like that that we did. There was one day. Um, as we were doing, uh, what do we call it? It was like a, we call it like a health fair or something like that. But it was, it was just, we were bringing everybody in the company in to update all their immunizations, basically all in one go. So we mm-hmm. just had everybody lined up and I think you were in first platoon, right? That sounds right. Yeah. Cause yeah, you were, you were on Casey. Yeah, I was on Casey. Okay. Yeah. So second platoon you know, cause they had to come in from camp red cloud camp Stanley. Stanley. Yeah. And they, they had to be there for, I don't know, until they, whatever, however they got back. I don't even remember how they got there. So we, we decided my, uh, the, uh, battalion senior medic was mm-hmm. there for it. And cause I organized it and he wanted to be there and like, okay, you know, how's your leadership skills, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. Basically I was being evaluated. So we decided that we had these guys just sitting around. We were just going to do a you know skills thing, and we decided to set up two lines and go through and see who could start successfully start the most IVs in like thirty minutes. So we were going through. And we would hit everybody like on the left arm, yeah. and then we still had time left, so we started hitting everybody on the right arm. Dude, I don't think stuff like that would fly anymore. No, I don't think so at all. Because like they don't even let they don't even let soldiers in basic training drop lines anymore like because that was part of the basic training. CLS, yeah yeah and like that's not even okay plus like i tell people that all the time they're like isn't starting ivs hard i'm like no we literally taught the dumbest soldiers how to do it it's like <laughs> it's a basic skill i it, remember just blood spurting everywhere on some people like why did you do that yeah if i'm <laughs> if i'm triaging mass casualty scenario and i have like five or ten infantry soldiers or whatever i'd be like go start ivs and all those people over there yeah. And I can pretty reliably know that they can at least 50% it. of them will get it right. <laughs> yeah. And then the other half can go help. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you're bleeding them out. <laughs> help them. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. There, there's just too much like video stuff now and everything. Yeah. People will complain. Do you remember? We'll this, come back to haunt you later. This might have happened before you got there. There was a guy, what time is it? One, one okay. twenty-seven. I got to make sure. I gotta make sure I pick up the kids on time. Sorry, guys. We'll be right back. I gotta pause this because the dog is barking. Hold. All right, podcast dog is here, so I can keep her from barking for a second. Oh, the goodest doggy. Yeah. Um. So, of course, losing my train of thought on this again. Uh, you said you didn't know if I was there yet. Oh, but. oh, oh. So the in processing uh, medics and everybody that were there that would give you whatever you needed once you got in country mm-hmm. when you were in uh, Seoul. Come here. Young song. Yeah. Um, one of the guys, it was right around when I got there, he ended up being arrested um, because he was taking, everybody was getting the uh, smallpox mm-hmm. pricks. He was taking the needle and drawing designs on people. Because you know, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a little it's, cluster of like yeah, yeah. seven. Yeah. So he was drawing like smiley faces and cross. So it would scar like that. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a fun thing to do, yeah. right? What do you mean? Just a circle yeah but he ended up being arrested for it really yeah that's crazy i wasn't there for that but that sounds like if i was the one who ended up with a smiley face i'd be like all right cool (laughs) because i when i heard about it what i thought happened there was a guy that in processed at the same time he was he was a recycle from my class uh at fort sam houston 
into the the class after me mm -hmm. but i had i i did um was it called the hometown recruiting assistance or whatever yeah I've heard. so of that. rather than having like 14 days of leave after i finished training i had like 28 or 30 yeah. or something like that so by the time i got in country the next class had graduated and so i got there at the same time as people that graduated after me and one of the guys i thought it was him i thought he was, I was the like guy doing it yeah i thought for sure i'm like this dude is dumb i don't know how he ended up graduating <laughs> i often thought that about a lot of people sometimes yeah. i was like did you make it through life? Yeah. <laughs> As you, you guys, get up to here. <laughs> you got MPs, you guys had OSA, right? Yeah, we had a one station unit training. Yeah. It's only you guys, tankers, calf scouts, infantry. I think engineers are one station too, aren't they? Where are they at? They're at the same um that Fort Leonard Wood Fort Lost in the Woods. Oh, they didn't change that one's name? Is that still the name? I don't know. I is Dude, it the, still the same? Every I time it was, I somebody, have no idea anymore. Somebody be like, "Oh, I'm at, I'm at uh, Fort Bragg." <laughs> well, they, Fort yeah, Liberty. Fort Liberty. But I mean, everyone knows that one because that was the worst mistake they ever made. Um, dude, so yeah. many guys from special operations have been so mad about that. They're like, "There's all these heroes yeah. in history." The story that I was told, the reason why they picked Fort Liberty as the name, because mm -hmm. there was an argument between special operations. PSYOPs in the 82nd mm -hmm. as to who. Yeah. I was like, basically everybody in special operations is airborne. Yeah. Just pick somebody from special operations. Yeah. Boom. All airborne. Yeah. Boom. But no, of course not. No, it looks like Fort Leonard Wood has the same name still. Is, uh, is Camp Casey, Stanley and Red Cloud still up there in Korea or did they shut those down? I feel I like they no got idea. shut down. I have no idea. Why would they shut them down? I have no idea. I, I'd heard something about it as a rumor. I don't know if it actually was confirmed or not. Camp KC is a U.S. military base, 40 miles north of Seoul. It says in use to present. Closed. Things now closed. Oh. Closing day of Camp KC. It's Wikipedia. Dude, one of our um, mail ladies mm -hmm. is Korean. I heard her listening to like Korean radio or something oh, yeah. one day. <laughs> yeah. And I, I said something, I told her where I was and she was like, Oh, I don't know it. And I'm like, really? Yeah. And she was like, but I'm not North Korean. And I was like, what a weird <laughs> I, thing to say. <laughs> I, I wasn't in North Korea either. Yeah. <laughs> I was close, but I wasn't there. Yeah. But I was like, that's, that's, I didn't think you were until <laughs> you said that At this and, moment. And now I'm wondering, <laughs> And Are you, you spying on me? <laughs> yeah, you work for the U.S. Postal Service, and you, hmm. <laughs> I wasn't suspicious until you said that. Yep. Now I'm thinking maybe you are. Dude, the 2ID changed their... Did they? Is it not Licky Bear anymore? Oh, oh wait, no, that was the... Um, that was the, the... That was 55th. <laughs> but it was that was specifically, it was um the sustainment brigade, whatever it was that we were under. I can't remember what it was. It's like 147th or something like that. Um, Penta Kitchen. It closed in June 2016. No, no, it's, that's the schools. I thought I'd read that it had closed, but. Maybe, I wonder if maybe there's confusion because I have 55th falls under 2ID now. I, I remember seeing that. I wonder if it's just the snippet. Because it's out of context. Yeah. Because it says... Yeah, it's just... It, I, it looks like it's out of context. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Villagers fear closing of Camp Casey on Stars and Stripes. Um, I remember going up that very hill when I was in my MP car to do a village check. <laughs> where is... Make sure there was no soldiers up there being silly. When was this dated? That's what I'm looking for. Uh, 2011. 2011. So no, this wouldn't be it. Nah. Weird. Yeah. I don't know where I'd heard it from. It was just like something I'd heard, and I just guess I never looked it up. Well, they always do all those consolidation, moving around, you know. I mean, everything now is a joint base. Yeah. Yeah. Joint I, base, Lewis McCord. That's, I was there, too. <laughs> um, what are the other ones? Uh, Fort Sam Houston. Okay. Because uh, it's joint base Lackland. It's just all Camp Bullis, Lackland, Fort Sam Houston is just all joint base Lackland now. 
Yeah, I'm not familiar with all the joint bases anymore. I feel like I just kind of stopped paying attention after 2015-ish. Well, so, because a lot of the people that I follow or talk with on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, are either in or they're veterans or like close retiring, mm -hmm. whatever. And so they'll be talking about something like, dude, like, I have not been out that long for everything to have changed. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see they're, they're talking about changing the PT uniform again? Again? Yeah. That was... Just Shoot. just yesterday, it was announced at like the Sergeant Major's whatever so thing. Going from black and gold to now what? So the quote was that they want because you know they were they were being asked questions about soldiers' issues and like things that need to be addressed. Mold still a problem. Food, dude. They have I don't know if you know this, but they have like uh, kiosks rather than having defects. So they have like prepackaged like when you go to the gas station, right? And you have like the sandwich yeah. and stuff like that. That's like basically what they have for all their meals now. It's so so you don't get cooked food right. that's delicious right. anymore. Right. Well, delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better than an MRE. Yeah. Um so now it's all just like prepackaged stuff yeah. that they just Yeah. And like half the time there's no food or like the place is closed and they have to go like all the way to the other side of the installation. Yeah. So that sucks. Um, you know, they're talking about all these soldiers issues and stuff. And then one of them, or it might've even been, I don't know who it was. I don't, I don't know who the person was that specifically said it, but he said that, um, we're going to revamp the PT uniform because, or if we're going to, uh, work out or whatever, train mm -hmm. to look good, our uniform should match. Like he wants it to be like sleek and like, look good. Like sexy, basically. <laughs> Hello, I'm a sexy army person. <laughs> I'm here to work out. I have been I have been thinking nonstop. Like, <laughs> what could you do to a pair of shorts and t-shirt that's going to make it look sexy on somebody? Like, what are the, what are they going to do? Put women in sports bras and like, yeah, spandex. Yeah, <laughs> little um, Lululemons. <laughs> yeah, like what? I, I don't. Are, are they just going to go to the gym? <laughs> and be like, what are people wearing here, and how do we adapt that? Or how do we take that and put that yeah. over here? Everybody's like, they keep you know, the army's mistress uniform changes, like the the mistress that they can't give up or whatever. <laughs> and uh, one of the guys, uh, one of the sergeant majors I follow on there, he made a comment, something to the effect of, "Yeah, next thing you know, they're going to be uh, changing the OCP or whatever again." And I was like, okay, here's the thing: just take every uniform in U.S. Army history, in issue one of every generation to every soldier's be done with it. Yeah. Because then if you're like, oh, we're going to go back to the pinks and greens or whatever, oh, but, I already got it. <laughs> here it is. Yep. You know, what I liked was the uh, the marshmallow outfit yeah. before they switched over to the next one, which is the one that they're... Uh, they switched... So they switched from marshmallows to the one that I was used to most of the time, and I feel like they switched to that black and gold one, right? Before I got out, 2014, 2015. I was already out for several years at that point. Yeah. So but, I think they had just swapped over to that, and so now they're switching again. Yeah. That's wild. So when I was at um, RTB, everything that we had was you know, black and then had the Ranger tab on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember always being like, this is so much better than looking like all the other dweebs in the gray. <laughs> 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 not, that, not that the uniform was like any better, but it's a... Uh, you know the like the issued version of the pants. If you guys can hear that, I'm sorry. It's uh, leaf blower landscapers are here. It's okay. Just take, like think of it as like a uh, white noise for you. Yeah. <laughs> so and the dog. Yep. Here she comes. All right. I gotta pause this again real quick. I'm sure. We'll be right back. All right. We are back. Sorry about that. So um, kind of figure out what we're talking about. I did too. Uh, PT uniforms. I feel like there was something right after that that yeah, we were going into. So the reason we paused, landscapers, leaf blowing, dogs are barking. Have you seen yeah. the video of the guy it's in some uh, Hispanic, Spanish country or whatever, the guy with the leaf blower walking around blowing women's wigs off their head? No, but that sounds funny. <laughs> I just showed it to Nona yesterday. I don't remember how it came up, but uh, yeah, this guy's like walking around. He's acting like he's cleaning the sidewalks or whatever. And then... <laughs> A woman will walk past him, will go behind him and blow their hair off real quick and then act like he's still working over. Yeah. One of them, one of the women was like walking by and there was like a low uh, lean to roof. Mm -hmm. and the, the leaf blower was so powerful, it blew the wig off her head and onto the roof. And he like ran away. He's like, not helping. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Not doing it. That's funny. There was a one woman was like sitting on a park bench and he's like, so he's like, 
like he's leaf blowing the, the grass behind her and blows the wig off. And she sat there for a moment and didn't even realize it. So her little wig, and she like looks and she sees it and it's on the ground from her. She's like, <gasps> oh no, <laughs> that's mine. I wonder if that's what happened to my wig. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, we should recreate that. That'd be funny. That would be funny. It's a bunch of skits of walking around. With the, gotta go buy a leaf blower. <laughs> gotta, gotta go buy a wig. <laughs> the, well, the, yeah. The problem is now all the all those leaf blowers and stuff that you can buy are all electric. That's true. So when you get the sound effect, you'd have to add sound, sound effects. <laughs> you'd have to go do a sound bite later. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, or like go buy a, one of the landscapers that has the gas powered yeah. one. <laughs> be like, and I've got it. Sweet. Dude, I was sitting with uh, one of our editors, the company I worked for a while back. And we'll, we'll wrap up here in a minute. So, you guys can get to pick up your kids. Got to get them kiddos. But I was sitting with one of our editors, and he was going through and trying to find sound effects for um, a commercial or something. And he was looking for an effect for, like, a door unlocking. Mm -hmm. And, dude, like, the catalog of all these snippets that I had to listen to. Because there's – with sound, there's no way to preview it. You yeah. have to listen to it. Yeah, it's you like, just have to be like, nope. Yeah, like nope. for, for like a video, right? You can see like a thumbnail. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's I want to watch go. the whole thing or watch a preview of it yeah. and see like the actual motion or whatever. But for audio... You just have to listen. Yeah. That's, that, and they're all titled the same thing, like key door unlocking. Yeah. Or, that's what I was telling Crystal because she wants to get into a little bit of video editing herself. And I said, yeah, I mean, the video part's not that bad. It's like when you want to add sound or anything like that, you just have to sit there and listen to it yep. forever. Yep. <laughs> It takes forever to go through everything because, like you're saying, you can't just be like, oh, that's what I want. It's like, nope, that doesn't fit. And you got to go to the next one. You might go through, like if you're adding a song, you might go through 10 or 15 songs. Yep. You're like, all right, well, that was 35 minutes of just listening to music. <laughs> yeah, and I, I basically do like easy mode editing for the podcast. I I have like a workflow that I go through so I know and it, like, it's pretty quick, And mm -hmm. but I'm not, I don't. I made a joke a couple weeks ago. I was like, I don't even really edit the podcast. I remember that. <laughs> I, I kind of don't. I mean, I do, but I don't sit here and do like color correction. Yeah. I edit out background sound. I put in our overlays. Yeah. I add in a couple sound effects. I put in our intro and outro. Um, I do that like a highlight reel or whatever at the beginning of the video yeah, yeah. with a soundtrack playing over it, which keep getting copyright striked on it and i own the you're like rights. this is mine <laughs> it's it's every other video youtube <laughs> will hit me with a copyright claim mm -hmm. and so then i have to go through and appeal it and then they'll come back so i go like 24 to 48 hours where we lose our monetization that's when yeah. the video is most viewed yeah that's brutal <sighs> yeah so now they have their they call it their creator music or something like that you're supposed to like have your library set up. They have like pre like music that you can mm -hmm. license right there. Yeah, I've seen that. But I'm like, I want to use this other track and it's not in that library, which is nice because that means nobody on YouTube is using it but us. Yeah. But at the same time, I can't upload my track and they're like, copyright. You know, yeah, your 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 creator music license, wherever license your sound license the songs. I'm like, I it's already licensed. It's, How, yeah. And you fight me on the copyright on the same damn song. So every single time. Yeah. Can, can I just get fast forwarded through this, please? <laughs> can I hit appeal and it just automatically approves? Dude, like the, their uh, like AI moderation for stuff. So I actually go through, I censor the words and, and that's it. Yeah. In, in all of our videos. I didn't do that before. But one thing that I noticed is if I censor it, but don't remove it from the transcript, oh yeah, it still gets marked. Even if we don't say the words, yeah, it's, it's in there. It still gets marked. Yep. So I have to go through the transcript, Just read through it, and well, Control F or Control H, oh, yeah. search and replace or whatever. I guess that is a bit more effective <laughs> than reading through the entire but yeah, hour. <laughs> so I, so I, I replace the words. I just replace you know with poop and. <laughs> with duck or whatever i've noticed that on uh like a lot of like other videos that they'll do that where they'll say the word or they'll say something and then it's just like <laughs> the word is changed in the in the uh, yeah. transcript yep. of it because that's that's what the the ai models use they use the transcript they're not they're not processing the audio yeah that's why would they do that when they can just boom there it read is. the transcript instantaneously yeah it's yeah done so yeah man, like there's so many different 
quirky words and things that you can't say. The the video um, from Thursday last week mm-hmm. um, just completely hit a brick wall. Yeah. Because Nona went into rants about politicians and name dropped way too many times and i just couldn't edit it out i knew it was gonna too many of them i knew it was gonna bomb and i was like damn it what was she talking about not kidding don't do that because then we'll have to go edit all this about about (laughs) the situation in the mountains oh okay yeah yeah and she kept saying their names over and over again i'm like so what they, they what they hit us with is um um politics or uh political ad campaign or something yeah Without like having like the, there's like a certification. And so I, I actually applied for the certification and got okay. it. But so. because I don't apply it to the videos, because if you do, it's just like, you know, when you assign like a rating for mm-hmm. any sort of like yeah. content, right? Now like you're a special ad category. Yeah. Now you're removing a demographic of people mm-hmm. right off the bat. But that's not actually what the content is. Yeah. So I don't mark it as that because it's not what it is. Yeah. But I have the certification. In case in case Nona goes on a rant. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's dumb. Everybody says don't talk about politics, but seriously, like it's not even don't talk about politics. It's you can't talk about politics if you want your content to trend. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's because everything's so politically sensitive too. That's yeah. why they're doing it. It's like politics should be something that people can talk about and it shouldn't be getting censored or just pushed off to one uh, category. You know what I mean? It yep. should be like, cause we can talk about multiple things like we are right now. And if you start talking about the politics, then it's going to just cut off the entire rest of the demographic you were talking to. That doesn't make any sense. So you can look at, you know, the analytics and stuff and you can see like the, how people converted, like were they external links? Mm-hmm. Was it YouTube search? Was it recommendations? Mm-hmm. Did they come from like a shorts Direct to the link kind of thing? Yeah. Were they channel subscribers, whatever. And overwhelmingly any videos where we talk about something, even if so we'll, we'll say uh, the 45th president, right? I won't say his name. Mm-hmm. We could be talking about playing cards. Yeah. And that's a term for like Euchre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't understand the context. It doesn't know the difference, so it's like, oh, boom. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> and I'm a Midwesterner, so. You like some euchre. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I actually don't know how to play euchre. Uh, do you know how to play spades? I haven't played it since Korea with Sarn Bell. <laughs> so it's like spades, but easier. Okay. I'll have to look into it so that way we can play some time. Do you need four people like in spades? You can no? play two. Um you just remove the nines. Okay. Because you only do, it's a nine through ace. Okay. So if you don't have the four people, then you just do it with, um, what do you say? Ten through ace. Ten through ace. Yeah. Okay. That's easy. Yeah. And you play in teams just like you do in spades. Okay. Sounds like fun. I like it. I remember sitting around just bored <laughs> during <laughs> during uh, training in Camp Casey. It's it it realistically could be viewed as like an entry level spades, like the it'd be easier for you to learn spades if you already know how to play euchre. Mm-hmm. You can definitely learn euchre if you know how to play spades, but if you just are going right into learning spades and having to know how to like bet and you're you know I can yeah. do two and a p or whatever like, and knowing your partner, it's so much easier if you just learn euchre. Yeah, maybe I should learn euchre because uh, Crystal doesn't really like card games that much. So it'd you, be fun to you, learn something that she would play. Yeah, Euchre is like, you as like a player, you can look at your cards right away and mm-hmm. know whether or not your team can win. Okay. Like, oh, this is a good hand. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. Is there any way to bluff or anything like that to like so, win? So when you call YouTube, don't strike this. When you, when you call the Trump. So say you're the dealer, right? And there's, you know, like the 10 of diamonds or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I tell you to pick it up. So Mm -hmm. now diamond is the Trump suit. That's what beats it. So you could lay an ace of spades, Mm -hmm. the nine of diamonds beats it. And then you have what are called the left and the right. Mm -hmm. Those are the two jacks are actually the two highest. Okay. The jack gets on suit on color. 
is the the is right the is the highest. The jack that's on color but off suit is the second highest. That's your okay. left. And then after that's ace, king, queen, ten, nine. Okay. So if I tell you to pick up that ten and I have both the jacks and the ace, I already know that I won. Oh. I got that's a, fancy. I got a minimum of one point. Okay. And you, you there's a couple different ways that you can that you can point, but if you win three of the five, mm-hmm. you get a point. If you win all five, you get two points. Okay. So it's what do you play to? Twenty one? Ten. Ten? Yeah. Okay. And if you buy like a Euchre specific deck, it comes with a six and a four card. Okay. Because those are typically the point cards. You put the six and the four like facing each other, mm-hmm. and then you just move the cards into like to, sh- to display how many points you have. Oh, fancy. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's a handy little way to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fancy. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, man, thanks for uh, coming on and helping me yeah. fill in some content. Yeah. I'm um, happy to do it. <laughs> tell people what your uh, real estate business is so that they can check it out and yeah. where to find you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my real estate business is Great Realty, LLC. Um, you can find me at great.realty. That's the website. So if you're just looking around for real estate in the area of Brunswick County, New Hanover is mostly where I'm focused. Specifically, Brunswick is where I like to work. I do have an agent that works up in like the Leland and New Hanover County areas more often than I do. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing in this area. You know, just helping people buy and sell real estate. Um, if it's something that people want, I'm happy to help. Sweet. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Social media. <laughs> Social media. Um, Do you just, want people to find you on social media? I guess I should ask. Yeah, Joe Mazza. <laughs> but yeah, go. it's I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, I have a business page, Joe Mazza Realtor. So Sweet. if you're interested in any of that stuff, go check it out. If well, not, it's all good too. <laughs> thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. You're the best. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>